Well, hello there, everybody. How's it going? How's your Wednesday morning going? How are you handling the end of the Seattle Seahawks 2021 season? How are you handling Seahawks failure? Because now there's nothing left to figure out except how you are going to deal with it. Because there's no more holding on to some slim hope. There's no more trying to do loser math of, oh, this can happen and that can happen and then we're right there. There's no more of that. There's just nothing to look at but a season that has been a waste, a season that has been a disappointment. And all we have is trying to figure out where it went wrong and what we can do to be better in the future because there's no more saving this season. And to really emphasize that point, I went to the 538 tool where they allow you to predict games and see how it affects the playoff race, as well as look at the uh, current state of the playoff race. They tell the story pretty cleanly, okay? The Seahawks' current playoff odds are 0.1%. 0.1%, not even, less than 0.1%. Basically, this is what 538 sticks you with whenever you have some scenario that can get you in, but you're not going to get in. We have about the same playoff odds as the Giants and the Panthers. So don't waste a single second of your life thinking about how this team can get in, okay? That's what I'm going to say to you guys. For the sake of your sanity, for the sake of your... You know, just your your time is valuable, guys, right? Like, you're, as a human being, your time is valuable. Don't waste your valuable time on thinking about things that are not going to happen. Just to illustrate how ridiculous this is, I did decide to try to find a Seahawks playoff scenario. And I did this just to highlight the fact that it's not going to happen. So I went to the 538 tool and I started picking games to try to figure out what it's going to take for the Seahawks to get in. Let's go through it real quick just to emphasize how impossible this is. Uh, the Seahawks would need to win out, obviously, win all three of their games. We would then need the Eagles to lose out, the Saints to lose out, and the Vikings to lose out. The Eagles, by the way, have a game against the Giants. The Saints have three games against uh, mediocre at best teams. And the Vikings still play the Bears, who they just beat the other night. So we need all of those things to happen. We need Washington to lose two games, and then we need them to beat Philly. So we need Washington to lose to Dallas, beat Philly, and lose to the Giants. Exactly. We need that exact scenario to play out. Then we would need the Panthers to lose at least one of their last three games. Now that's pretty easy to put together because the Panthers do play the Bucks twice. And we need the Falcons to lose at least one of their last three games, which is reasonable because they do play the Bills. And if all that happens, you're in. Now... As for alternate scenarios, the only other thing I can think of is maybe you could say, well, what if the Niners lost some of their games here at the end? What if the uh, Niners dropped? Then maybe you could afford uh, the Eagles to get in instead. Like, that, that's fine. Like, you could say that the Eagles lose these, uh, win these games instead, and then they would get in, but so would the Seahawks because the Niners would have fall, fell out. And other than that, that, that's really about it. Those are the only two real paths I see. You need three of these four teams, Niners, Eagles, Saints, Vikings, to lose out. Uh, you need Washington to either lose out or win one game because they also have the tiebreaker on you. And then on top of that, you still need the Falcons and Panthers to lose at least one game. So don't think about it, guys. If it happens, then just know that somebody up there is looking out for us and um, be grateful, but... I'm not about the false hope here. What I am about is the ability to move forward knowing that there is nothing for us to consider except the future. There is no present, or, well, there is a present, but it's not good. It's not what we want. We do have three games left. I want to see what the team does. I want to see what the team can bring to the table. I want to see if maybe they can put together some good, uh, good tape on some of these players Guys like Jake Curhan, who impressed the hell out of me these last couple games. If he can continue to develop these last three games, then maybe we have something. Uh, if we can get Stone Forsyth out there, that's great too. Sidney Jones continues to play effectively. If he can, can um, continue to develop, then great. Even a guy like DJ Dallas, I thought he played pretty well against the Rams. Rashad Penny, these are guys who could be part of a running back stable next year. <clears throat> there are things on this team to continue to watch for these next three games. That's cool. I got no beef with that. 
I am going to watch these games. I'm going to see what we do. I'm going to see what we have to build on going into this offseason. Maybe even trying to figure out what what we do with this offense with Waldron and Wilson and is it salvageable? Right now, I'm very down on it overall. I, I, I really don't want any of this stuff back. I want Wilson out. I want the coaching staff all out. I'm, I'm done with it. But these next three games, maybe we'll, we'll see something that makes us at least consider the other options. So all that stuff means something. We do have some young players on this team. Like, what if Jordan Brooks balls out the next three games? Then we'll be really excited about where his career might be going. Maybe he is that future pro bowler. Maybe he is actually starting to develop into something more than just a decent player. Um, maybe Puna Ford develops some pass rushing ability, and we can at least say, well, we can move him back to one tech, and he'll be competent there rushing the passer as well. Things like that, they mean something. But... What I'm really grateful for at this point is at least it's over. At least we didn't have to go all the way up to week 17 thinking that we still had a real shot at this. We don't. What we have is a 0.1% chance, not even 0.1% that is not worth any of our time. So I think that these next three games, we keep an eye on them. We see who continues to look good the players that I mentioned previously, see if they show they can be part of something special next year, year after, etc. But we now, as an organization, have a chance to get a jump start on where we go now. Because we already know this season is in the dumpster. We already know we're not going to make the playoffs. So now, we can take a look at this and decide now what we want to do. So we can fire people... Monday, the day after week 18. We can fire people that morning and start the hunt for new coaches, new managers, new front office people, new scouts, whatever. Some of these teams that are trying to wait to see if they can squeeze in or not, or maybe finish strong to see if they're going to fire people, they're, they're not in as advantageous of a position if they don't end up getting to where they want to get to at the end of the year. Because then they're going to have to make a tough call. Like like uh, a team like the Dolphins that looked like they were going to fire Brian Flores has now won six in a row. They're obviously reconsidering. So they may be taking that decision down to the wire. <clears throat> um, maybe a team like the Broncos with Vic Fangio. They don't know yet. Now that we're here, we can decide. We can already decide like, okay, whatever happens the next three games, we're going to fire this guy. We're going to fire that guy. We're going to fire whoever. And then we can get right on the coaching search as soon as the season ends. So we need to make these determinations now. And we need to hope that the decisions we make are the correct ones. We get the right people out of here. We keep the right people here. Again, personally for me, I want a completely clean slate. Keep what you have to keep. Keep the things that you can keep. But most of it really needs to go as far as I'm concerned. And we got to use what we have. There are a lot of things that we don't have. We don't have a first round pick. We don't have a ton of money. We do have some. We do have a decent amount of money. But we don't have the most money. But what we do have is the ability to definitively say this season was a failure. Something's got to go to be held accountable for this. So let's make these calls now and let's try to get a jump start on this offseason. I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks.